Safe to say, Steven Gerrard's definitely not having the highlight of his managerial career. The man who stopped 10 times in a row, beating Celtic to the title with Rangers, getting a dream move to the Premier League with Aston Villa, now finds himself unemployed. After making many good signings for Aston Villa, Kamara, what a standout he's been. He now finds himself having links to the Poland job and unemployed. Even his old backup, Michael Beale, is manager of Rangers. And his other backup, who he got in after his backup left, Neil Critchley is at QPR. They've had better luck than the man himself. So today, we're going to try and revive Steven Gerrard's career and make him the best manager in the world. Yes, guys, welcome back to the MWS channel. Today, we are rebuilding Mr. Gerrard. And we start with a difficult decision because there's got to be a job that he can take. Can't take the Poland job on career mode, not just be a manager. Maybe we get an international team down the line. We don't have to stay at one club. It's difficult because there's only like two clubs without a manager. There's Ian Birchnell, who's just been taken over by Big Duncan Ferguson at Forest Green. Then there's Bournemouth with Gary O'Neill. Leeds United with Jesse Marsh just getting sacked. But the team I think I'm going to go to, quite close in proximity to Liverpool, managed recently by an ex-teammate of Gerrard. It's Wigan Athletic. Colo Torre was sacked, struggling in the championship. Can Gerrard do a job? Returning back to management, here he is. He's gone to the championship. Sometimes you've got to go down to go back up, and Steven Gerrard is appointed. And a big thing I want to run with in this save is actually doing these management objectives. An academy player, they want seven clean sheets at home. They want a mid-table finish. And then they want sign two players or one important player and sell two. Is this squad really strong enough to stay in the championship, though? I'm not thinking so. And looking in the academy, we've got one standout player in Matthew Stacey. He's a midfielder, though. Not the defender they wanted. And that graphic on the screen, it's just so nice to see. So nice. But it is kind of difficult to start off with a rebuild job. We've got to take this Wigan team somehow as high as we can. And our first thing is an outgoing James Carragher, Jamie's son, going to Hartlepool. He's followed out by Adiko to Rochdale. Done the video on them. We get our first incoming. It's Cameron Archer on loan from Aston Villa. He's used his contacts back in the Premier League. They sacked him but he still takes the player. It's an improvement on Charlie Wyke into the first team. And an outgoing is Joe Roddo Grant. We've got a lot of young players here. And another outgoing, getting all these youngsters out on loan. But a permanent one is Tom Naylor. He's going to Burnley for almost a million, moving up in the ranks. Or well, hopefully not. They're in our division at the Burnley. We'll beat them. It's almost time for Steven Gerrard's first game. Have we made one of the sign-ins? Uh, yes, it did count in Archer. Or actually, no, it didn't. That'll be the player sold. We still need one in. As we get his first permanent signing in, walking through the door. The first player meeting up with Gerard, who is not coached before. Interesting deal. Young goalkeeper Michael Cooper joins from Plymouth Argyle. He's had a horrid injury in real life. Really hope he recovers. But he's our new number one. Cost us two million in the deal to bring him to the championship. And it is time for Gerrard's managerial. Not debut, but Wigan debut. How's it going to go against Birmingham City at St. Andrews? We win away! We win away, Gerrard's reign off to a good start. Brilliant, as we're getting a few more youngsters out on loan. It doesn't hurt the club. And a lot of youngsters have now left the club, leaving us quite thin on numbers. Still, unless I can pull a signing off, this small squad will be going into the championship season. And we've got our second signing in through the window. It's kind of all our budget. Three million. Signed Cooper, now we signed Josh Harrop from Preston. Under a million. He's just a fringe player, but James McLean's getting older and he's his replacement. He's not an important one, but he makes up these numbers. So that's the team that's going to take us to halfway through the season. How will we be doing? Or Gerard be doing? And the ratings around the squad are pretty decent, I've got to say. The defence is getting there. And as for the table, we are kind of clear from relegation. 17th in this league, 31 points. I'd say that's a good job so far. We just need to stay out of the drop zone and try and build towards the mid-table finish the board expect. Good for Gerard, as he's got to beat Swansea in the FA Cup. The Carabao Wimbledon, look at them. They are flying. We've been knocked out. Left the competition in round one to Portsmouth. But we've got another youth academy player stepping up right now. We've got Harrison Myers, 17-year-old. 
getting the first team. Gerard taking these young players under his wing, but he's not done well with Cameron Archer, probably due to the injury, and water is wet. James McLean has submitted a transfer request. Who would have guessed? He actually lose the man, James McLean, to a pre-contract, which to be fair, just get him out of the club now. I'm not too bothered about him, James McLean. Bye bye. An ancient footballer going to Young Boys. How ironic, as Max Power, the coolest name in the game, leaves to Deportivo Alaves. Leaves us even lighter on numbers, but hey, McLean doesn't leave till the end of the season. Plus, we get to put some youth through, and Cooper in goal is very unhappy since he's joined. And our first international job offer is of Wales. Oh. I think I'll hold out though. And there's been a player that I've been fighting for on loan with Torino and we've won the race. Not this guy, but Jake Kane does join from Liverpool, wanting to be coached by Gerrard. It's this man, the other Liverpoolian, Nathaniel Phillips has joined Wigan for the relegation battle. Now that is Gerrard swing. I'm sorry to Watmore, who's a really good defender in this team, but Phillips has to step in. That team is very strong going into the second half of the season to see how Gerard does. Come end of the season, look how unhappy our squad is. No transfer requests of a sort, but it's not a happy bunch. I think I know the reason why. It's because we have just survived relegation. Five points, what a slip off at the end of the year. Still, we did enough to avoid the drop, so... Credit where credit's due to Steven Gerrard. He's done his job. Not finishing mid-table, but avoiding relegation. Staying in the championship in the first season back with loads of troubles is a good one. In the FA Cup, we were beaten. I'm guessing we're beaten straight away to Swansea, if, if I'm going off my own instinct. Yep, I'm correct. We're beaten 2-1. Steven Humphreys, 12 goals doing as well. Will Keane joining in. And Callum Lang looks the shining star at the moment. He has done very well. Still, we'll build on. I think we do stay at Wigan. I don't really want to move on just yet to another club. So, Gerard, can he make two seasons of it? So, without further ado, we move straight into the next season. The board is saying thumbs down. Need to turn that into a thumbs up. If not, Gerard will be going. Not sitting around and letting this board bully us. As we've got a decent team this season though. It's a lot better than the last. I think the main man will be Lang in this team. We've got Nyambi in the defence. Defence is looking very strong. We've put Dariqua at left back over Pierce now. Hopefully that's a good change. Humphreys has gone up front. As the board expects us to fight for promotion after last season. That's quite difficult. Low priority, but gain money from shirt sales and everything Gerard would do. The youth, the exposure. And we say goodbye to Big Nat Phillips. To be fair, I don't know why I'm that sad. It was terrible. We only just avoided relegation. I have to say our players are all under contract as well with 7 million after renewals. That's pretty good. A lot better than usual, but we will lose players. And we begin with an outgoing of Michael Cooper. Yes, the goalkeeper we brought in, leaving for two million to Anderlecht. He didn't enjoy his time here. He was always unhappy. Goodbye, you brat. As we get in a good CDM, Daniel Barlazer. He's experienced in League One, Rotherham, League One and Championship even. So we've got a Decent player there. As Steven Gerrard also gets Odin Bailey to join his attacking options. We lose a player in Jamie McGrath. Another player going to Young Boys with, of course, what's his face? The ugly guy. James McLean, that's it. And I was only joking. As Harry McHugh joins him going out to a loan. And we get some players joining the club now. Ethan Mitchell does leave, but... Tino Anherin joins on loan from Chelsea. Good at Huddersfield. But he's not the only attacking midfielder walking into the club. We've got Kwame Poku coming from Peterborough, the league below. Almost paid three million, but a 21-year-old 70 rated. Brilliant for the championship. As we bring in Mr. Versatile as well. He's actually um, in our division, I'm pretty sure. If West Brom didn't get promoted. Didn't check the top of the league, but Adam Reach reaches down. Chooses Wigan to go up. And James Carragher is out, not Jamie. One of us youth players, Harrison Myers, does go. Gerard, central midfield kind of player getting experience in Portugal. As finally, we have managed... To sign that goalkeeper. It's Brad Collins coming from Barnsley that road to come to Wigan. Makes our squad a lot stronger. Maybe if there's some outgoings for us some money, we buy another. But for now, kind of settled. And we do lose another in Jordan Cousins. He is sold to Alaves, joining up with Max Power. We actually do manage to fit another one in. 
will still would be a fan. You don't know the Stadio Dems manager. He manages Floddy and Balogun. We've got him here at Wigan. He's still 70 rated on this career. Why is he not going up? Such a great player, but that's not it. We've got Adam Forshaw, who is a scouser. I'm think he's a scouser. I think I've heard an interview before, but Steven Gerrard will know him. Gerrard knows how to pick good technical midfielders. He's a good passer. And I'll do for my team. Look how big it is. We've got so many players at the club, for sure. For Cousins. What a replacement. And halfway through the season, I see improvement. Definitely on the bench players. Collins, Kerr. I mean, Lang is just out of this world. I've got some very big news in a minute, but I'm going to talk you through these cups. You can see, where are we there? Round four, beaten by Arsenal on penalties. That was so hard for Gerard. Of course, the FA Cup's just starting. The Championship, we are 10th. Brilliant. We're doing tremendously well. 40 points. We're pushing for the promotion. We're in the race. However, one team has approached Gerard to be manager. It's Nottingham Forest. Offering a lot of money. Stevie Cooper has left the city ground. And I think... Mm, I think it's got to be a no-brainer. Steven Gerrard will become Nottingham Forest manager after a year and a half with Wigan. It probably doesn't go down well with the Wigan fans, especially when jumping to a league rival. But there he is holding the shirt. It's a Premier League shirt, but they're in the Championship. Starting off with an FA Cup game, but as I look in the league, we are three points over Brentford in automatics where we do want to finish. This is Gerrard's way to get a promotion under his belt. And back into the Prem. The team looks a lot stronger. We just can't lie. It's a it's a Premier League team. Some phenomenal players where we've got to put his own spin on things and get into that top division. I mean, Kyle Walker-Peters 80 rated in the reserves. Are you having me on? And it's kind of already made for us. I think this squad should rock up to the Premier League again. Definitely got that quality. Best part is, though, we've arrived just in time for January. So we can put our own stamp on things. They still want us to win the title, however. They don't just want the automatics. And that is the only objective they've given us. I want to make sure I get the wages right at this club as well. 55k, I don't want to go over. I want this to be a steady club. I don't know if I make many additions straight away. Maybe get some players out. The money is 40 million. The parachute payments are fully there, but I'm not going to be sending that in the championship. We start with outgoings. Atif Konate, we're going to loan him for two years to Norwich. It's it's a loan to buy. I don't think we'll see him again. Mohamed Draga leaves. Been at Forest quite a while, but Jenna, I don't want him. And at second thoughts, I think we've got to have Nico Williams in the team. So I'm going to go for Kyle Walker Peters at left back. Richards will be on the bench. It's it's a Liverpudlian or an ex-Liverpudlian as Lingard and Gerrard. I would love to be the fly on the dressing room when them two are speaking as, hey, I won you. He's coached him before, if I'm not wrong, in the Liverpool Academy. As we get rid of Will Swan on a loan as well, he's going to Cluj. And Tyrese Fauna has gone to Chris Wilder. Oh, not Michael Carrick's, innit? Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough for two million. And it is generally... Quiet with transfers. I don't think I want to sign anyone. Something pops up on deadline day. We'll, of course, pursue it. But I think in half a season, six months' times, Gerard should be a Premier League manager again. And hang on, we might have one deal over the line. We've managed to steal Rafael Ribeiro, a 20-year-old, 76-rated shot stopper for £6 million from Palace. It's left us heavy on goalkeepers, but no goalkeeper would leave, even though I was telling them to. So that is the team that will be a... Premier League team next year. I'm sure of that. Was I correct? Oh, I definitely was. Four defeats all season. 15 draws is a bit weird. But we won the championship. Steven Gerrard from finishing five points just a place above relegation. The season after is promoted with a completely different squad. The FA Cup, Brentford in our league doing very well. But we were beaten 1-0 by Leeds United. In the Carabao third round to the Evertonians. But overall, I think I'm pretty happy. And I'm going to use this offseason to get rid of some players. You can see Oliver Hammond, quite a few bids. And Ethan Horvath. Three players above the 10 goals and one above 20. Which is Taiwo or one ye. What a performance. 25 goals in the championship. Sam Sturridge in second off the bench. Brennan Johnson joins in. He needs to train a bit more as a striker. As Lingard joining in. And Richie Larrier. Ooh. 
I actually phased him out of the squad, but he looks pretty decent. That's a good graphic to see, isn't it? Kyle Walker Peters and Steven Gerrard with the championship trophy. And Duarte Duarte. So good they named him twice coming through the academy. Another Jao Carvalho. And we start Gerrard's tenure here at Nottingham Forest fully in the Premier League. You can see I've gone a bit more conservative with this formation. We're going to go for three in the middle. That is Lingard coming out. I've tried to sign contracts up. He's not signing one up yet. And of course, goalkeeper and kind of defence is covered. Still do have my shortlist though that I want to pull some players in from. And I want us to sign one player from outside of Europe and make youth player profit with a mid-table finish. 97 million in the bank. Saved it from last season. That should be doable. And let's start it off, shall we? Step van der Berg. Yes, another Liverpudlian, ex-Liverpudlian coming to help Gerard out in the Premier League. With Forrest. Perfect that his cost us absolutely none of the budget. And we lose George Shelby as well, one of these youngsters. Getting rid of a little bit of this dead wood. Got Duarte Duarte coming through. Nobody's safe. And I'm sorry, what am I seeing? Sergio Rico is at Markham. That's unbelievable. And we've spent a lot of the cash right here on a player from... I think it's North Macedonia. We've gone ahead and signed Elgif Elmas from Lyon. 60 million is cost, but... We'll have to revert the formation again. He is a special attacking midfielder. Team looking very capable of staying up. And like either so, we'll go to Bournemouth. That's only a loan though, because I'm trying to get another defender in. And we have got the man we're after. Alex Mighton's going out on loan to Fenerbahce. That's not the big story. The big story is Diego Tavares coming from Benfica. He is 18 years old, 12 million. 75 rated centre back. I am very happy with him and Van der Berg coming in. That is youngsters galore. And I'm thinking this might be the team we go into the first half of the season with anyway. It's not the strongest, but we do have Elmas in that team. Tavares is only on the bench. That's for the rest of it. I'm, I'm, I'm panicking about Darnell Johnson not getting to a striker quickly, but. Uh, Maybe lacking goals. And deadline day slam shot as it's been a bit of a bit of a mixed window. I think we have strengthened, but it is it enough to stay in the Premier League? Halfway through the Premier League season. We are just surviving. I mean, it's alright, it's alright, but there's only six points between us and Premier League Luton Town. Didn't expect to see them as 30 million to make a difference for Gerard's side. And that is a harsh one to take. Yatesy has left Nottingham Forest to go to Lyon. Bad negotiation. I'm going to try and get someone cheaper. What a big loss. He wanted out, I'm afraid, and Gerard not getting well with Tyrone Mings, and now him. And we've got our player from outside of Europe. Let's skip straight to it. Jorman Campuzano. That's the replacement for Yates. Same rating. 3.6 mil. Decent little player, that one. And you might see right here, we've lost backup goalkeeper Tom Nichols. Wanted to leave, and Smith will get a chance to be back up. Oh, never mind. Because he's signed up with Bristol City, but I guess we've got him for half a year. And even Harry Toffolo, one of the originals, leaving to go to Real Betis. Do have Richards on the backup. And we've signed a player up for next year, at least, depending on which division we're in. Or not even depending, actually. Nathan Ake from Manchester City. Get in. That one's a pre-contract as well. Still 80 rated. So bring in a replacement goalkeeper as well next year in Carl Darlow. He's going to be the backup. And we've got another central defender in. No, it's not Nathan Ake. It's Alejandro Frances from Burnley for 7 million. He's 22 year old, 75 rated. We're getting these youth players in. As another one who's not really youth, but a Croat who looks very, very promising. Etar Musa comes across from Benfica. He's just going to be a backup striker. Tall man as well. Hopefully he can help a one year who looks like the only man scoring. Brennan Johnson's got some and Elmas. But in this second half of the season, we need to come good. Come end of the season. This team looks bruised, battered, unhappy in places. Because they haven't got mid-table. But they have survived in the Premier League. We have... Finished above Leeds United and 11 points clear. It's not mid-table, but it's it's close enough. I mean, Arsenal won mid-table. I'm pretty sure their players aren't throwing a huge pad here. Sorry, Arsenal fans, us in the Cups. Where did we finish? Look at that. Sutton in the semis. We got to the round six, the quarterfinals, but beaten by Chef United, who we shouldn't have been beaten against. Managed a smooth survival. I just don't get why players are so unhappy. I won you... With so many goals again, he's worked with Gerard before. Even Brennan Johnson stepping up now as a striker. 18 goals. I mean, Musa got one.
That's not great. Probably need some more strikers in or some attacking options. Do we make it more than a year and a half in charge of Forrest? And some youngsters to come through in Jasper Gray and Roman Ryan. They're all right. It's not a huge building job, but I'd call it a successful season. Staying in the Prem, he's moved from Wigan, fighting for relegation. Now Forrest. Do we take that step up again? And season number three for Steven Gerrard right there. I feel like the board have let me down a little bit. Or him. 53 million is quite a bit, but considering we got almost 100 last season, not as good. We start the season off with Brighton. We've got to get built for that. Still a very tired squad, and I'm finding it difficult to actually find improvements. We've got Nathan Ake coming into this defence, and Dalo as a backup goalkeeper, so we're set in terms of overall squad. And we lose a player here, the Canadian... Larrier, I think it is. He's going to the X-Team Rangers for 5 million. And Loic Ibiso already departing again. PSV over Bournemouth this time. And Julian Balcon goes out as well. 6 million we've stretched out of him. Also, Dale Taylor getting rid of a lot of youngsters now. Being offered the England job as Gerard. You know what? In a very unrealistic but slightly, slightly parallel universe. I could see it happening, but I'm not going to take international duty. I want to focus at the moment. Making money with the player outgoings. Will Swan leaves as well, but we're not getting any players in. I've had four deals break down so far. I'll promote some youth in the meantime. We've got Theo Jeffrey progressing through and Sebastian Brooks. Deadline day. We've got to make something happen here for Steven Gerrard's Reds. Finally, we manage one. The only problem with this signing is we've got nowhere to play him. Still, he is quality, and we got him for quite cheap at like 27 million. Harvey Barnes comes from Roma. Jose Mourinho's trained him. He's come to the Midlands again, but not to Leicester. Still got some money left over, but that is the team we're going into this season with. I'm happy with the defense despite the low ratings because Tavares on the bench is growing. So with no further business to do, we're going to end dead deadline day and see if we're out of a relegation battle this year and for once a very happy board halfway through this season and I think I know why they're happy we're doing a tremendous job we're in seventh we're actually pushing for a Europa Conference League at the moment still in reach of the Premier League of course Liverpool close to Gerrard in both senses of him and the club close to him in the league three points off of us doing bad. I think we need to make a sign in this window. We've got 30 million so we do have enough money in the bank to bring a player in. We've got a player for next season. Ollie Watkins will join his ex-manager coming from Leverkusen on a free. I'm going to be losing Jesse Lingard to Newcastle on a free as well. We couldn't sell him. They wouldn't sign a contract unless it was 200k and that's not doable. And management with wages as well. He's going so unnoticed here. 78 in the Premier League for a top five team is, or top seven, is brilliant. So we're going to get Brilliant or Jada out on a loan as well. The Paraguayan going to Sampdoria. And that 27 million might be of use next season. If we get in the European football, it would be good. So we might see this season out and just keep his fingers tightly crossed. Oh my days. Never mind. Never mind, because Gerard's dreams have come true. Liverpool have put the contract down 21st of January 2026. We're manifesting it. He will sign up to the Reds. I have just been interviewing for jobs. It was either this or I think it was Atletico Bill Bow. I just put my finger in. I just put my toe in the end of the water, seeing if it was deep. And we have come out and found some treasure. Off to Liverpool we go. It's took a trip to Wigan. It's took a big build at Nottingham Forest. But Steven Gerrard is back with the Reds where his career flourished. Steven Gerrard, manager of Liverpool. Not been easy getting here. And we've got a brilliant youth academy player in Julian Guzman. I've just been shown the academy and brilliance already. I mean, our objectives aren't simple though. Domestic success win the league and FA Cup. Win the Champions League as well. Remember, that is the aim to win the Champions League. And our first game... Is against former team Forest in the chase for Champions League football. We are 10th in the league as it stands. As let's have a look around the grounds. The FA Cup, we're still in it against Southampton. The Theatre Club and the Carabao, we're out of. And I think I got too excited about Liverpool too quickly. This team, it's really not doing it for me. 33-year-old Mohamed Salah should still have it in his locker. The midfield is weak. We're still in the window as well, so we've got time to sign. Some hidden players here is Dembele. What a player. We've got all the youngsters who are coming on. We've got Rafinha, Kubaletsky, Danny Olmo, and Gravenberg. Team seriously needs a shuffle about. The defense is really good, but the bench, 
The bench is awful. Dembele and Kovaletsky. I think they're both issues. How much have we got to spend? 166 million. That should be enough to sort out the bench. The bench is as important as the first team. And one thing I haven't touched on is we're actually already in the Champions League. So we might not have to fight for it. This season could be over immediately. If Gerard can do it for his former club, Villarreal, there's some lower teams still in this competition for Fiorentina and Salzburg. And I said to myself, I'm free to lose any of them right wingers. We've got too many. So Rafinha was the first one approached and the first one who's left. He's gone to Spurs. Kind of like a swap deal now between him and Kubaletsky. On to deadline day to see if we can get anyone actually into the club from Gerard's preferences. As we've lost Owen Beck, our backup fullback, you know what that means. As we welcome Tyreek Mitchell, he's gonna be a backup. 31.2 million, that's FGS or FSG is it? Spending a bit of money. I'm not really caught up with Liverpool's board, I just know the fans don't like them. And we've got one player that I wanna get in, but the deadline's just gone. Have we missed out on him? We have, I've just deleted the message because I may go back in for him later on. I'll keep you in suspense. The squad's still vastly experienced. We've sorted the bench up to a degree, just shuffling it round and getting Tyreek Mitchell in to be back up to Andrew Robertson. And the squad is definitely good enough. Is it good enough to win the Champions League for Stevie G first season round? We'll have to see. We've changed Gerard's look. He's got the tie out and he's got the Liverpool blazer with the badge on it this time. He loves the club, so he's got it out to show. And we are through. We've beaten Villarreal. I mean, a nil-nil draw in the second leg. Still, though, we did it in the first one at Anfield. And we have drawn Fiorentina. Which should be one of the easiest games. Still, I'm taking nothing for granted. Gotta say, we've turned the league form around. We've lost to the former club, Aston Villa. But we beat Fiorentina 2-0. Manchester Derby. I'm enjoying watching these simmed. We lost. And we lost to Fiorentina. We drew to Chelsea. It's Real Madrid up next. Team is fully fit. As we're going to simulate this one, it's the semi-finals. Ooh, a 2-2 draw. Very interesting. We need a good performance as team is slightly tired from Spurs in midweek. As we win on penalties. That's it. Champions League final. Oh my days. We've just beaten Real Madrid in what should be one of the big like Istanbul kind of games. Jared even played in it. We've done it. We have come from the depths. I mean, it was level all the way, but winning on penalties is just such a good feeling. As it looks like Barcelona. Will it be revenge for the 4-0? Or will Trent and co do it again? It really well could be as Julian Guzman is going to Shelleroy. And the Premier League's looked good around the Real Madrid game. Did we win? Yes, we beat Southampton. Where are we in the Prem? Harvey Elliott asking to play in the Champions League final as well. I just skipped past that. That's just unbelievable. That we've got the message from the youngster right on the end. As we finish seventh. Oh, that's not Premier League. Champions League spots in the top four. We'll have to do it the hard way. Have we won the FA Cup to try and get us there? We have not. Manchester City have won it. We went out rather early. Manchester City beat us. From the days at Wigan. Now Steven Gerrard has rebuilt himself. Sacked from Aston Villa. Linked with the Poland job. But he stayed in England. He rebuilt Wigan to survive. He rebuilt Forest to a Premier League outfit. And now he's back at Liverpool. Struggling in the league. But he's got the chance to win the Champions League. And of course... That is the aim of this save. And it's set. It's even at Old Trafford. The Champions League final is at Old Trafford. Surely this isn't fair. Just being there with his Man United save, but this is horrific. Horrific. How is he letting something like this happen? Set Blatter, have a word with yourself. I mean, it is closer to us, granted. But it's at the local rivals' place. The fierce local rivals. So the Liverpool players will hate to have memories here, even if we win it. Oh, and Fabinho in that team, you know. Fabinho is now at Barcelona. People saying he's struggling in real life. I've got to agree. But still, I think he'll be good enough to beat us in this game. Going to be on top form. Y-N-W-A. For those who don't know that abbreviation, it is You'll Never Walk Alone. Because I'm just hearing it all the time. I know with my superb voice saying the whole phrase will get me copyrighted. And a bad tackle from De Jong, who is just a B-Tech Gravenberg in our squad. We haven't really signed many players, so this is Steven Gerrard getting a team gifted to him on a plate as Barcelona gifted the gap to take the lead here at Old Trafford. 1-0 down in the Champions League final. I've previously said we've got a knack for winning in season number one in the Champions League. The first season we're in it, we win it at the moment, that is. It might be broken the curse here. Good shot near post to let down that man, Steven Gerrard. It's a shame to concede early on, but still going to keep us calm because composure. No Ramos against us here. 
to break Salah's armor. Actually, I think there was a Ramos in their team. Yes, there is. And a Ramos the youngster. That's not a good omen. Rafael Liao getting a bit of a gap for Barca. He's had a word with Kessier and come across to the Camp Nou. We've got to st still try and defend Mendes. Bit of a block in there. Frankie de Jong goes for a 1-2. Barca very good. He's not given a penalty. It's an offside. Tell you what, it's a difficult game and they've been slipped through again. This is Ilias, the winger. We can't catch up to them. Alisson off his line. We need to head that. Pau Torres. A man who has played at Old Trafford in our Manchester United save. There's Gravenberg just to keep hold of this. Into Darwin Nunez. That's a good ball over the top. One Pete Bock will be happy with. Here is Kubaletsky again. A cut inside. Lay that off for Gravenberg nice. off the outside of the post. What a chance as Tielemans. That's a ball straight around the corner into Trent Alexander-Arnold. Alexander-Arnold. That's a cut inside. That's a good move from Trent. Trent to fire this in. And Mike Meigen. Robertson running through. Lay that off. Drop. Mohamed Salah now. Mo Salah. That's Old Trafford. He likes scoring here. What a goal for the Egyptian king. It's fitting that it's Mo Salah. Mr. Mo Salah to score in the finale for Steven Gerrard. Get in. Absolutely ecstatic. Still, we move on. It is Mohamed Salah now. Cutting into the middle. Darwin Nunes lets it run across his body. He's going to fire it and test Mike again. And the halftime whistle goes. One apiece. We keep scrapping. We want Gerard lifting this trophy season number one, like I said. Good tackling there. Ah, whistle with the ball again. Mr. Nunez. Agent Nunez. Now, Mendes in the way. Get the pressure on Trent. This is where the Gagan press just filters in. We keep on going with the press. Go on, Trent. Power he had to run all the way upfield, but he's left a gap at the back. Exposed. It's Rafael Liao. He's cut out Pau Torres and Trent. The Portuguese makes it 2-1. Stevie G won't be happy with it. It was way too easy. Way too opened up. And Paul Torres with the ball through the middle there into Gravenberg. Darwin Nunez. If we don't win this, I am really scared. Kubaletsky. We've got to keep on running. Kulosevsky, should I say. Said his name right and he gets the ball into Salah again. All level. Mo Salah in front of the Liverpool flags in the stadium. Could be his last season in Liverpool colours, so he has to do stuff like that. He's 85 rated now, but he's still showing quality. And he's impressing that man right there. He's got the better of Xavi. Get in there. Robbo's tried to get us away as well. Darwin Nunez on a turn in the middle. Harvey Elliott is making the run across. Here he is. Harvey Elliott. The youngster is still technically a youngster. And oh, what a save, the Frenchman. Brent tried to fit a ball through as well right there. And he's took out Fabinho. Straight in the book. Bad tackle as Jackie Grealish. Grealish has just scored an absolute blinder. For Barcelona at the end of the Champions League final, you know. I think that's it. That is it. It's even skipped the replay that could have been the winning replay. I think we've bottled the Champions League final, you know. It's a cut away for Barcelona. Coming across to try and block them. Andrew Robertson still the ball. Finds Sandro Tonali. It's a chance. Wowdo in the middle. Fabinho, we've got there to defend. But it doesn't matter. Because Barcelona are Champions League winners. A season we really do need to forget about here with Liverpool. Really not a good start for Gerard in terms of legacy. We've lost the Champions League final and we've fallen out of the Champions League altogether. Still, if we remain in the job, we've got a chance to rebuild here. Steven Gerrard back home. There's light at the end of this dark, dark tunnel. After Champions League disappointment, 358 million. Should be up there with this team that we've got. I think we need another backup striker, maybe another centre midfielder, maybe a center back we'll see where the wind takes us and we've gone ahead and got ourselves another striker he'll still be behind darwin nunez darwin's all the favorite santiago jimenez makes the move over from west ham for 44 million we lose another player ourselves billy cometio out on loan a lot of loanies already gone out as we've brought in a very tricky and quite young winger savio comes across from crystal palace the psv youngster in real life very, very decent. He's a player I don't even know where he goes. I don't even know if he slips onto the bench, but it's good to have him in the squad. And I'm going to do it again. Mateus Delict is a player I really wanted to sign last season. I'm going to try and get him again. I'm trying to do a good job with wages here as well at Liverpool as James Balagizi goes out on loan. And we should have signed our man right here walking into the club. There he is. Mateus Delict signed for 85 million. A steal, if you ask me. The new Van Dyke is in, as it makes it only really a backup goalkeeper that 
is crucially important. And we've lost a player as well, Mihailovic, that American centre forward. I didn't want him. As I think the final bit of business is the backup goalkeeper through the door. We've gone ahead and got Coin Castiles, 8 million for someone who is, I think, 30. Three or four. And we're left with 200 million. And I don't even think we sign anyone else up. The objectives also say that we're in the Europa Conference League, which really hurts the soul. We've got to win that competition. No doubt about it. Our group being Martimio, Aberdeen and Lillistrom. We've got to get out of this competition. And on deadline day here, we are fighting for one more signature. Oh no, boy, is it a big one. We've signed him again. Vinicius Jr. is teaming up with Frank Lampard. He's got Savio and Vinny for both wings supporting Darwizel Nunez. What a front three that should be for the future. If it's not done this season, it should be in the future. He's playing Conference League football. He's going to buy into the project that Liverpool can go again next year, getting into the Champions League final and winning it. Unbelievable how he signed. It puts pressure on us, though, as Steven Gerrard, to actually get wins with this team. We've signed two first-teamers, players for the bench, and it's even harsh on Salah, who's dropped out of the squad. We'll see how we're doing halfway through, and if we don't win this competition, the Europa Conference League, that is, don't know what to do with ourselves. Halfway through the season, we finish second in this group, lads. What is going on? We're in the preliminary round, which has us... Hosting Trap on Spore. I hope that's a win, but we'll check the other cup competitions. The Carabao, we're in the semi-finals. West Ham, we host. That's two-legged, though. We're building up to the Premier League. Of course, the third round hasn't took place in the FA Cup, but we've got Northampton. And in the Premier League, we're in a title charge. We are second. Very well done, Liverpoolian team. We're just one point off City. Can we just jump above them? All in all, it's really good. I don't think we have much money to spend. Six million, nothing really at all. We're just going to hope we're back in the Champions League next season. We build on from there. We don't let Delict, Alexander Arnold, Alisson, Nunez, Vinny down, Gravenberg, all 90 rated, should be playing in the Prem. Or not the Prem, but the Champions League. Positivity right here as we have one manager of the month. But does that come with trophies? It hasn't in the Prem. One point off City. One point off. It's Champions League football next year, though. Can't turn his nose at that. As for the Emirates FA Cup, we won in a Merseyside derby. Gerard has his first major honour. That is brilliant. Get in there. I mean, the run was quite easy, but we had to beat Man United. Really good news is the Carabao. We won again. A double. Steven Gerrard, double trouble. It could be a triple. We've got Conference League football still. But we've beaten the league winners on that. If one point off the Prem has let us down for a quadruple. And you know what? It has as well because we've beaten Ajax four goals to nil in the final of the Conference League. Danced our way there. What a successful season it is for Gerard. Three trophies. Still not the big one that he wants though. The Champions League must be won with this team. Has to really be close next year. Remember, all the way from Wigan, as Darwizel with so many goals, Vinny, Kovaletsky, Gravenberg and Olmo, all in the double figures, ready for next year. And after that success of last season, I see no excuses. I don't want to win that chuffing recycling bin looking trophy. I want the Champions League. And a player out at the start of the season, I think that is Bradley, one of the right backs. Gerard's going to do a bit of spring cleaning. And I'm really seriously struggling to actually think of a position we need to sign in. Our weakest position is actually Andrew Robertson, but he's here for the culture. And we do actually lose a player because I want to bring another midfielder in. We're going to lose Naby Keita to Celtic for £25 million. As we do lose Usman Dembele as well because I feel like we're getting closer towards the Champions League. I don't want Dembele standing in the shadow or not in the shadow, but shadowing out Mohamed Salah. So I want to move Salah up and I've took Dembele out the picture. And we do manage to get him in. The Hungarian Sabosqua has finally arrived at the training ground, signing the balls and getting to work with Gerard. Ended up costing us 100 million. It's a big dint in the budget, which was 211 million. So it's not that bad when you think about it overall. And halfway through, oh, very very comfortably top of the league. But that's not actually what we care about at the moment. It's the FA Cup. No, I'm only joking. We play Burnley. It's the Carabao Cup, which we're not in. But actually, that's not the most important as well. We went out 
Early on to Millwall. Josh Zirker will be happy with that. Are we through? Yes, we are. Sporting Lisbon. After we came second in our group. Sevilla almost coming above us. But Club Bruges and Leipzig actually finished above us in the end. So without further ado, Gerard will move on to his sporting game and see if he can win the Champions League. We're still going strong in the FA Cup. You can see we beat West Ham. We beat Brentford. We beat Leicester. And we beat... Sport in Lisbon. I think we're in the final of the FA Cup as well. I mean, close enough. Maybe the semi-final. Judging by the calendar as yes, we do. And we've got Real Madrid. First leg is a 3-2 win. We're going to simulate the other way, the second one. Bit of a risk jumping straight over that like that. We've got a good win midweek against Adelia Smith's Norwich. But it's all down to this. Look at the 90 ratings we have. Robertson peeling off a little bit in rating still. I haven't signed a new left back. Him and Salah still here and we are through to the semi-finals. Gerard's doing a job or should I say Vinicius Jr. is getting the job done for him. Come on, first leg. We have Bayern Munich by the way. Saudi Mane will be in the team for the Allianz Arena at the first turtle and it's a 3-2 win. Kovalevsky and Trent actually got a double. Will Steven Gerrard be going through to the Champions League final? He will. It's a 3-2 win. Darwin Nunes, Patrick Schick with a brace. And Gravenberg, the ex-Bayern Munich midfielder. But Darwin Nunes to seal the deal and take us into that all-important second final. As we're here already, Champions League final, 27th of May, 2028. That's actually... Not too far away, if you if, if you ask me, from where Gerard started in his career. Been some great players through the years and everything. As I've got a feeling we're going to do it here. Let's get the job done instead of make it third time lucky. Liverpool fans roam the streets as well. I don't even know where this is set. No idea. It looks to me, is that Tottenham's new stadium with, the, with a bit of the arch on the back? It is, you know. Oh, yes, it is. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. A bit of an advantage. At least it's not Old Trafford. That should be the lucky omen that we're not there. And there's the team we've got. We were very lucky not to get a suspension. So Bosco on the bench. Harvey Elliott. Savio. And I didn't actually say, but Mohamed Salah's gone to a 79 rated. Hence why he's not in the team. It was a harsh decision, but Savio off the bench. I've just got faith with. He's the future for this brilliant team. What a lineup we have as Kulusevski. That's a turn in the middle. Straight onto him again. Dejan. Through the middle, that's on to Darwiz, or you know, Danny Olmo, close. Gola Schlotterbeck, he's like 90 rated in the save. I was looking at buying him, of course, and I looked at him in the Nottingham Forest days, so it's been quite a while of headhunting for him, but we never actually uh, managed to get him. It turns out he's gone to PSG, as that was a hopeful ball. Thought that might have actually worked out for us in the end, as what a tackle. Trent with a good step across as well. Dejan Kovaletsky, the Swede. Come on, get running. He's now 90 rated. And he's got Darwizel in front of him. The man who sent us to this position. The number 27. Blocked again. God damn, we can't get past them. And Nunes has stayed down. Nunes has stayed down. We've got Santiago Jimenez on the bench. But I don't want to use him. Or could we even put Savio on and Vinny up front? Because I hate that injury. As Vinny has the ball again. Vinicius Junior. His number's up. Darwin can't continue. So Jimenez... Do us the justice. It is all us. As all Mateus delict with a terrible touch. Alison bails us out. At least Alison's still going, but that was dangerous, Kylian Mbappe. I just fear seeing him every time. Anthony Alanga. They've got a troublesome Swede on their wing. Mankini into Schlotterbeck. Oh, it was close. Would have been some serious damage inflicted if it was the man who we were trying to sign to score as T Elements running through that gap. He's found Jimenez. Plays a 1-2. The Elements, who has got a replacement signed right now, with a foul on Danny Olmo. Free kick position. And Trent is on this field, so nobody's safe. Trent, Alexandra, Arnold off the post and Donnarumma to catch. How close was that? As Danny Olmo now trying to win that header down. He doesn't, but Vinny Jr., that's a shot coming in. And his P rolled in. Schlotterbeck scores at the other end, helping us. And it's going to be a samba dance. From Danny Olmo, Vinny Jimenez and Kulusevski. We have got the luck. And you've got to say it's just completely down to luck. It was Danny Olmo with the strike off the leg of Schlotterbeck. And it's put Donnarumma off. What a first half. But it's not over, lads. Second half to come. Danger not averted. As our danger man Vinny Jr. is making a run forward here. He tried to turn out. That might be another injury, you know. Very dirty team. There's a ball forward, however. And Kylian Mbappe! 
Mbappe has them level. Oh, I was just talking about how long's left. And now we're looking at the clock because PSG have got the latest goal. And that can build them up for something. We don't want to watch it again, but Mbappe in front of the cameras. Might have to be a bit of an Istanbul. We've got to come back now because their momentum in this second half has not been good. We've got to grow more into this as Kulazewski. Come on. Here he is, the Swede, cutting inside. Can we get a pass off? That's easy. That's an easy save as well. Danny Olmo gets some power on it as he might get power on some kind of cross here. If we can conjure one up. Vinny was on the run. Gravenberg has to win it. He does, but to Mancini. And yes, I do know it's the Roma one called Mancini, but I like saying the other one is Ozzy Azabal. Now into Max Kilman, is that? It might be as Camavinga running forward. That's a great tackle. And the referee's giving it a foul. Absolute joke if you ask me. Killing Mbappe. Alisson with a save. A big chance for PSG to win this. I don't want extra time, lads. Come on, Anthony Alanka's round us. 15 minutes to go. PSG on the attack of Yazabal. A cross in again and headed away at the near post. Jimenez going to pass that forward into Vinny Jr. as well. Vinny Jr. has avoided the tackle from Mukiele. He's running through. Vinicius Jr. He needs some support from Dejan Kovaletsky. He's passed it in. Donnarumma not close enough. The Swede on our side, sweeping them aside. But what a finish it is. He just picked out the man who was making the run. Donnarumma was very close, but not close enough. Kulusevski has the man of the match as Robertson's got the ball here. Go on, Robbo. Go on, Robbo. We've got the run in the middle. That's Dominic Savoskoy. What a save. Asking for more at the end of Savio's missed out on his header, but Mateus Delict into Pau Torres, Tielemans. A ball forward again into Dominic Savoskoy. That's towards Jimenez at the back post. Three added minutes went up as Newhouse passes this forward. Referee, you should be looking at your watch right now. It's in the middle of the park. Yazabal's gone backwards. It's into Trent. And the whistle has gone. Steven Gerrard. He's won the conference. The FA Cup. The Carabao Cup. And the Premier League. I think he has anyway. Maybe he hasn't won one of them. But I don't care. He's got Forrest promoted back to the Prem. He's got Wigan surviving relegation in the championship. All that coming after the sacking from Aston Villa. I think Gerard would take falling down to Wigan if he knew this was going to happen in five years' time. Maybe he should try it. Maybe he takes tips from this series as the captain will get to lift that trophy very, very high. Gerard has done it with his boyhood club. Pau Torres, a man who we had in his United save. I won't mention that again. Is going to get the chance to lift it high into the night sky here in London. What a trophy to win. Liverpool and Gerrard's career has been revived. For the days at Wigan, we've got Callum Lang. What a player he was. Brilliant on that right-hand side. A one-yee for, no, not for Nottingham Forest, I should say. What a player he was up front. He scored his goals to get to the Prem. And of course, in this save, we have got to go with Darwizel Nunez. But any one of those could be it, you know. A lot of players who actually started. Alisson, Trent, Robbo. Players on the bench. Henderson was still here as well. As what a revive we've done right here. If you want to see more rebuilds on the channel, do drop them down below. Which teams you want. Which managers you want if you want another management one. If you don't, just let me know and I'll get back onto just individual teams. Thank you for watching.